And um, here he here they dropped him like a hot potato because they don't like what he has to say. Uh, uh, is that free speech? I mean, is that even legal? I, I don't even understand how you could do that. Well, it scares me because, I mean, you know, I like when I had one of my guests on, Ronald Parnham, you know, I was really nervous the last time he was on my show because he's talking about things about, you know, that uh, our money technically is nothing. He was going on like when you're born that that your birth certificate, the government, you know, takes that birth certificate and raises money with it. And he was going on about all this stuff about, you know, the new world order and all this stuff. And I started getting nervous yeah. because, you know, two hours of that, and I'm going, Oh, I wonder if I'm going to have repercussions on this. And, you know, right. <laughs> you never know. Then, then, then the next time I had him on my show, right after that, it seemed like every time he started saying the wrong thing, all of a sudden I would lose the phone connection. Like, boom. I get him back. I get him back on. We start talking about it. As soon as we start going back to the subject, guess what happened? Drops back out. And it did it like four or five oh, times. God. Now, the next day, I get a different guest on. Never have that problem. If I talk about UFOs or Bigfoot huh. or things like that, never have the problem. But talk about a little bit about conspiracies. Uh, then all of a sudden, you know, if it gets the wrong type of conspiracy talking about I get all these weird things or my computer will crash. You know, the server will just drop right out. That's all weird things. Well, I'm a, a as I've uh, already told you, I'm a big, big, big believer in New World Order. Big believer. And I truly think that there is a an effort going on right now to get rid of the middle class. We got If you want New World Order, you can't have the little guy owning his house and the little guy having a few bucks in his bank account and, you know, the little guy not depending on the government for a variety of services, you, you have to get rid of them. You, you have to have a handful of rulers and everybody else has to be the serf, so to speak in um, politics for a uh, tyrannical rule. So, just look look at some of these crazy things that they've come up with in the last 10, 15 years. Uh, for example, this reverse mortgage, okay? Have you ever heard of such? They want old people who might be tight on cash, and I understand that. You're on a fixed income. But all of a sudden, there's a zillion commercials for tight on cash. Oh, we care about you. Yeah, Why don't sure you could do, do a reverse mortgage and, and we care about you. So in other words, you can give your whole entire house away to that or back to the bank and uh, leave your kids basically nothing. So no wealth is distributed. It's just gone. And um, poof, that's that. Um, another thing, of course, is this whole student loan gaffe. Okay. They're brainwashing these kids into thinking that you're going to be flipping burgers if you don't go to college. So if your parents didn't save a couple hundred thousand dollars for you, you better get a loan. You better. I mean, what the heck? Uh, there's so many trade jobs out there that pay tons of money that these kids should be looking into. And uh, instead, they're all getting these enormous loans so they can go to college. Are they ever going to get out of debt? No, they're probably not. And I mean, I could go on and on. There's all of these little ways to get the middle class to get rid of their money. I, I really feel that way. And, I, you know, God forbid you got somebody in your family who has to go into a nursing home. I mean, that'll wipe out that that could even wipe out, you know, a millionaire uh, at 10,000 bucks a month. It, it just. Uh, I I really think that you know our our kids our grandkids uh, are going to not be having a, a good as life as we've had. Well, how can they? You know, I have eight kids. They're they're all adults. The youngest is a set of twins at twenty five. Then they go up to around forty. And you know what? For them finding a good paying job, even with education, it's hard. And you know what? I hate to say it, some of them are working just near minimum wage because they can't go out and find a, a, another type of job. It's all labor type of jobs or service oriented type jobs. I mean, we gotten rid of 
all our manufacturing pretty much in this country. Do you know, uh, three weeks ago, I found, I thought Curtis Matthews 25 years ago was the last company making TVs in the United States. I was wrong. There was a company down south that was still making TVs in the United States. And because of the tariffs that's been put on, that he had to lay off all his employees and close up his business. And now there's nobody making TVs in this country. There's nobody making computers. I used to own a computer manufacturing company back in the 80s. I'm talking where I have the grant from the FCC to manufacture them. They were tested in labs to make sure they they met emissions. The FCC, I'd had to send them to them regular to be tested just to sell them. And nowadays, I mean, nothing is made in this country. I mean, nothing. You can't even buy yeah. a toaster in this country. It's made in this country. It's all made somewhere else. And it's all garbage. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, again, because we're eventually going to be a world without borders. <laughs> so why build a wall when, you know, five years from now, we won't need a wall because we're going to be a world without borders. You're you're exactly right. And who's going to get screwed? America's going to get screwed. And things might get a little better if you're in Bangladesh or you're in Ethiopia, but eh, let, not let's here. not get crazy here. We're going to lose. And, um, you know, you kind of can't blame uh, business if they can get a uh, Indian guy to be an engineer in India for a quarter of the price it, it costs an American. Well, I, you, you kind of can't blame them, but we've set, we've, sold off uh, our politicians have sold off any kind of laws preventing that from happening so here we are uh really at the end of our reign as as united states of america and um you know nobody wants to talk about that no you know we're we're in and, and, I'm sorry, go ahead. And I'm just saying, you see, like I see with a couple of my kids, right? They're so depressed because, you know, how can you go out and, and get married, go get apartment even, and and live at 13 to 15 bucks an hour? You can't do it. It's impossible. And that's the type, the bad problem. That's the problem that's going on. I know some people with degrees that are making 40 Fifty thousand dollars a year that you know i i know somebody it's a, a psychiatrist it came and make eighty thousand dollars a year and how much did it cost them to go to school to become a psychiatrist and they're going to be paying their student loans back to who knows how long forever yeah. right then they'll and they'll bail out wall street but they won't bail out the student loan crisis okay that's that really kind of gets in my craw and uh i'm out i i live outside of dallas and uh on a on a side note uh we went to the um george w bush presidential museum uh, a couple years ago and there it talks about you know the whole wall street bailout and there was a little caption on one of the pictures that said how he helped bail them out. And I'm like, wait a minute. I thought that was the first thing Obama did. So what were they bailed out twice? They were bailed out <laughs> once by George Bush and then a second time by Obama. What? I mean, this is grand larceny. I don't know. Then on top of this, what really got me, I've been reading that, uh, they want to take, you know, the, I don't know how old you are. I'm 66 years old, but they, they're talking about, well, the people on Social Security don't need the amount of money they're getting. You know, <laughs> we, we we need to balance our budget because we're going so negative. Well, the reason why we're going negative is because, you know what? When I was a kid, I had a bad mistake. I thought I could buy friendship. You know, I'll, I'd buy this guy an ice cream bar, this guy an ice cream bar. I'd buy this guy a pop, and they would like me. Well, you know what? They liked me long as I was buying them stuff. Yep. Well, we do that to yep. other countries, okay? So why should we sit there and make people my age? Maybe it won't affect me, but I'm talking about the people who are coming close to retiring maybe five years from now. Why should they have to give up, you know, what their entitlement is? Uh, because they mm-hmm. have to balance the budget out when we're still giving out all this money away uh, to all these yep. other countries. Or the Pentagon lost trillions of dollars. They came in account. Well, what happened? It was under black ops. We don't know where it's at. Yep. 
But then, you right. know what? We, uh, we take it from the old people. Why not? Let them live on baked bake beans every night for dinner. We don't care. Absolutely. It, and it's not just black ops. As we found out earlier in the year, they've got a secret slush fund of taxpayer money that pays off women that were harassed at work. I mean, can you believe this? That's where our taxpayers are going. And, uh, you know, on a side note, what a joke, the Me Too movement, okay? If this was a real Me Too movement, uh, there would be women at the Capitol every single day demanding a list of everybody who used taxpayer money to get out of sexually harassing their staff members, okay? I'm sorry. This is a joke. And, no, there's not... We found out about two guys who used it, and uh, that the yeah a whole slush fund was created for two guys. Give me a break. Yeah. So it, yeah, it, I know. It, there's how many other slush funds are there for other uh, stupid reasons? You know, you get you get a DUI. Here's a slush fund for that. You get a uh, a rape charge. Here's a slush fund for that. You get you know how, how many slush funds don't we know about besides? And then of course, like you mentioned, black ops. They're just taking our money and stealing it. And uh, I couldn't agree more with you. Um, it's, it's, it is what it is. We're, are, we're giving away our country. We can't, we're not going to be able to sustain this artificial foundation for much longer. And when our kids are of age, well, they're not going to see social security. I'm in my forties and I'm doubting that I'll see it. That's the scary part, you know, and you try to live on it. You know, my wife still works and 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 if she wasn't working, you know, I would be kind of really starting to panic because I couldn't live off of what I have. You know, it's it's impossible yeah. because the cost of living is up. So but they want to take it away or take a big hunk of it away, you know, and, and they also want to push up now. They, they, they're trying to push up for being able to get Social Security. They want to move it to 70 you know how many people die between 68 and 74? I know. Uh, so what, so, so, uh, um, if you defy the odds, would you get it for, to, to, for 80 to 80? You get your piddly paycheck for till 80 if you defy all the odds? I mean. Or for maybe two or three years. But that, that, that's because they want to siphon all the money out. So if they move it up another five years, that kind of buys more time for them, doesn't it? Right. It it makes me wonder. I, I really think this whole Social Security thing is a Ponzi scheme. And it, it makes me wonder why they're like so passionate about illegals coming into this country. Is it when they work at um, wh- whatever place? Are, I don't know this, but are they paying into Social Security? We know they'll like, never use it because they just go back to Mexico. But is that why... Is that what this is all about? Are we using them to prop up Social Security so we have more coming in? I'm, I've, I've often wondered this. Well, I think the outgo is more than what's coming in. You know, again, like uh, Ronald was saying, yeah. that every time somebody's uh, born, they take that birth certificate, right? And the government uses it as, well, to borrow money against each one of our citizens of this country. Uh, you know, if me and you ran our checkbook, like how the government runs theirs, you'd be in prison to the day you die. Well, well, bankers, bankers only have to have 5% reserve of what they loan out. I mean, I've got $5,000 in the bank, but I can loan out $95,000 and charge interest. So if you foreclose on somebody's house, you never really gave them the money for that house anyway. And then here you get the house back, which you can sell and you're recouping more money than you loaned out. You, you know what I'm saying? It, it's, it's a scam. Can, can you loan out? I mean, would your, would, would your bank allow you to loan somebody? Say you had $50,000 in the bank. Would your bank allow you to loan somebody $500,000? Or would you, the bank allow you to put, Five hundred dollars in there, and write a check out for ten thousand. You know, hey, right. it's doing exactly. the same, same thing. Same concept. Same concept. Yeah, uh, I'll give it back in time. But we, our country, lets our banks operate like that. And that is scary. And, you know, who know? And then don't get me started on uh, Wall Street. They can do just about anything they want. 
They do. And you know, one thing, I, I'm, I'm going to have to wrap up the show here tonight. You know, I blew it today. 